mereka sekaligus moderator seperti webinar kita hari ini. Hari ini kita akan bahas topik yang cukup menarik dan relevan di era sekarang ini, yaitu sinergi antara AI, generatif AI, dan data. Nah, topik ini sangat penting dalam era digital kita saat ini, di mana AI memerankan peran yang sangat krusial ya dalam berbagai industri. Nah, sebelum saya mulai, izinkan saya uh, menyampaikan beberapa hal. Yang pertama, pastikan uh, mic Anda dalam keadaan mute. Nanti jika ada pertanyaan, bisa di-submit via chat. Nanti di akhir sesi panelis, akan ada sesi untuk tanya-jawab sekitar kurang lebih 10 menit. Nanti kalau ada pertanyaan, silakan ditanyakan. Kemudian, uh, oke. Okay. Silakan untuk yang mau nyalakan video atau virtual background, silakan. Kemudian, oke, okay, mari kita mulai. Di sini ada tamu kita, our distinguished guest from Hidden Brain. They are here to present uh, their generative AI uh, technology, uh, also uh, their views on synergy between generative AI and data. As an Indonesian uh, citizen, we also curious uh, Uh, how is it going in India as one of the pioneering uh, country in terms of uh, software technology? Please, uh, Parmesh, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Abel, and thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. It's uh, my pleasure to you know introduce myself as a uh, hidden brains. So I bring it over like 15 years of uh, experience driving into the customer partnership, mm -hmm. identifying the business opportunities and transferring the high performance sales teams. I'm passionate about redefining the business landscape through the digital transformation from enterprise mobility to big data analytics, IoT and AIML, of course, in the cloud computing. At Hidden Brains, my goal is to build an intelligent enterprises that thrive in the fast-paced digital era securing the numerous awards and driving consistent growth along the way so with all your uh, acceptance i'm just gonna do a quick screen sharing and we'll start the presentation all right so today uh, we are gathered to talk about generative ai and the data how it's transforming the industries not in redefining the how we innovate. So let's dive into the future and see how intelligent the data interaction is shaping the tomorrow's world. So the topics we're gonna cover today is the down of a new technology revolution, understanding of the gen AI, revolutionizing the every field, the power of data, how we synergize the data into the execution where we can make the best out of it, impacting over multiple across the industries, then the use case of the datums AI and the future outlook that how we envision the whole AI and Gen AI execution. So I'm moving to the next slide. So we are at the cusp of a technological revolution that's redefining how we live, work and interact. I hope uh, my slide is visible, everyone. There is no problem. Yes. We can oh, see us. Because there might be a lag on the internet. So sorry in that case, if anything happens. So yes, so technology revolution, that's the redefining how we live, work, and interact. Gen AI and the data are the driving forces propelling us into the new era. Nowadays, everything what we do, we all focus towards the gen AI. So let's understand from a broader perspective how the generative AI. So it's a subset of an artificial intelligence, the broader terms. It's focused on creating a new content the models, the insights from the existing data. So as you can see on the structure, the AI ML comes on the top, then the deep learning is there, generative models are there. And there are of course different output types, be it text, be it images, audios and video. So everyone is using in our day-to-day -day life directly or indirectly with smart assistants. So I'm sure everyone is aware of the Siri, the Alexa, they are all our virtual assistants. Social media, we use a lot of Instagram, we use Facebook, we do use LinkedIn, which always provide us a personalized feeds. E-commerce, all the shopping carts, whenever you do any shopping, you know, obviously they will be tailored through your recommendation. So they will know exactly what you like, what you don't like, and then give you the recommendation. So introducing the data as a new gold, I specifically mentioned here data is often referred as a new gold. Why? 
because everything is running across the data. If you have a right data, right information, there are a lot of things, you know, you can manage it. So it's create a value. If you are ensuring the data drives from lead to innovation with the competitive advantages, economic impact, organizations in leveraging a data effectively to outperform their peers, resource comparisons. So like gold, data must be mined and refined to unlock its true worth. So how we see as a generative AI is a heartbeat, it's an essential fuel that powers the AI models, enabling them to learn, adapt, and generate the meaningful outputs. We all aware that just an information, it is of no use if you don't define it properly, if you don't clean it properly. And that's where the chat GPT and all those tools are playing a very important role into our day-to-day -day life. So quality matters over quantity. So high quality diverse data enhancing the AI performance and the reliability. Okay, so recognize the data as a core of a generative AI realize the question. So how we can enhance the data? Data enrichment. So augmenting the existing data with the additional relevant information. So I have a certain details and I feed it more data, then I can enrich the information. Incorporating the varied data sources to improve the model and the generalization. I can also implement the processes to ensure the data accuracy and the consistency and ensuring the compliances and building the trust through the transparent data handling. We want to ensure that how the ethical data practices are taken place so that your data is secure and confidential for your organization. So now we might aware that, you know, it has been used in all the different industry, be it a finance, be it an energy sector, be it an education, manufacturing, retail or healthcare. AI is being used everywhere. So now I'll, I'll ask my colleague, you know, Poojan to continue from here and take this discussion further while we deep dive into the data. So Poojan, over to you. Thank you, Parmesh. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, very good afternoon. My name is Poojan Shah. Uh, I have a total 15 years of experience in technology with uh, expertise in AI, ML, blockchain, AR, VR technologies or MR technologies. I'm very passionate about exploring new technologies and discovering how they can be very useful to us to make this world a better place. At Hidden Brains, uh, currently I'm working and I'm very focused on working on AI, specifically AI technologies, working on very innovative projects, which gives uh, leverage to the business and make the people life easier. So let me share my screen and then let me know if you're able to see my screen, right? Yes, you can see your screen. Perfect. As Parmesh mentioned, uh, we are now in, in, in an era where the industries are revolutionized by the data, data and the AI. And with combined both, it will be having a good combination. So these are some kind of an, uh, domains where we are uh, uh, like revolutionizing the uh, industries. Are, for an example, are finance, healthcare, energy sectors, manufacturing, education, and uh, retail. So let's move one by one. So as I mentioned, manufacturing. Manufacturing is um, is a traditionally hands-on and very very labor-intensive industries. It's now being reimagined and redefined uh, using AI technologies. So let's take a real-world example. So Epiroc is one of the leading steel production companies. There was a challenge with them with customer rejections of their products. Now, what Epiroc has done, so Epiroc has implemented the AI into a steel production company, which reduced the customer rejection by 30%. Now, how does this, they do it? They, they basically introduce AI into design optimization, like AI generated design to reduce cost efficient. They also implement predictive maintenance to anticipate the failure before they occur because nowadays as, as Parmesh mentioned data is new gold a lot of these industries have a lot of data from past and they use this data to train a specific models and using those pre-trained models they will do a predictive analysis on them 
another thing what they have done is pro process automation right so to streamline all the process uh, using rpas using ai tools to make sure they have efficiently on working efficiently overall the next case study uh, of ai leveraging would be in healthcare so healthcare would be how ai will leverage into healthcare so one of our leading uh, healthcare practitioner companies in us uh, is basically implemented a ai to reduce clinical decision making by 20 minutes per encounter and and we all know right how this second and how does this minute are important in healthcare industries okay i hope uh, my screen is visible full screen right Yeah, it looks better. Yeah. So let 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 me co come to uh, come again to healthcare industries. So uh, I'll take one of the example of real world where there is a healthcare provider called Tidal Health in US region. They basically implement an AI uh, to reduce the clinical decision by uh, reducing up to twenty minutes per encounter. And as we know in uh, healthcare industries every minute counts so what they have done basically so they have uh, they have a lot of data in past for drugs so they have trained a specific uh, model on uh, to discover a drug because drug discovery takes years and years to uh, discover a specific uh, combination of drugs so by creating their own customized model they have done it very efficiently personalized mechanism so by using the personalized data of users uh, they have uh, given a users a uh, prescription using personalized recommendations medical imaging so a um, uh, kind of an x-ray or ct scan they have used this kind of an image to automatically detect uh, predefined diseases so this is how the industries nowadays are taking a benefit from ai uh, another example are uh, from an uh, like consultancy company a uh, partner which works on financial domain so they implemented a chatbot so what does this chatbot will do it will basically do a customer interaction and doing those kind of a customer interaction it basically answers up to 90 92 percent of all the queries which are human uh, tendency uh, basic they will ask so this will help them to convert 36 percent of their inquiries into leads and then increase the webinar registration by 47%. So this kind of a small AI tool like chatbot, customer engagement will increase. They also have done a fraud detection because in financial industries, a lot of transactions are, 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 being, are being monitored, uh, which can be fraud and which is very time consuming for a people to monitor 24 by seven. So they have introduced a fraud detection by identifying a specific pattern and then detecting a fraud. And overall, they have also put a risk assessment using AI to make sure the data is, uh, data is accurate and it predict the market risk accurately before anything occurs. Next uh, case study is coming from a public service. Uh, so open government product in Singapore they rolled out an ai powered solution which automates the public servant task resulting like 60 percent registered users they were getting 46 percent reduction in time spent and admin administrative tasks they are doing previously so how does they have implemented ai so on on the data management they have streamlined the data processes and services so the public or a common man can come and do the registration properly. That is why a 60,000 registration has been increased. They have changed their policy using AI data-driven insights, which gives them an accuracy of making a decision proper. And they make a citizen service uh, AI enabled chatbot where anyone can come and ask anything on any in any language in any like in your natural language tone and then ai chatbot understands and give you like 90 percent of answer accurately so uh what we have discussed till now are the case studies of how the 
different different domains different different industries are taking ai into consideration now because every industry has their own challenges and that is how we have developed a solution called datums ai which caters those uh, solutions of uh, data mismanagement and data accuracies so that is how we introduced datums ai as a product so datums ai is in combination of generative ai and the data it leverages both the data which you have on your past and the generative ai technologies with the synergy we create datums ai so it basically turns your data into an actionable insight in a real time so let's see what are the principles of datum ai so datum ai works on a very conversational interface so it is more like a chat gpt of your own data so you can interact with this uh, datums in your own language nlqs and it will reply to your text it will also reply to voice so it has a advanced voice enable models so you can speak and get the data out of it it will the the usp is you will get a real time insight of the your data so like providing instance action insights for making a quick decision because everyone needs a data to make a decision and if you have a real time data that that's a good thing so that's what we as a datum provides it is has a very seamless integration throughout the industry so be it a database or postgresql sql ms sql my sql or be it a rest api or any endpoints you can directly configure into datums and then start talking to your own data there is no learning curve in this in this product because this is all ai driven so as you know there should be no learning curve it understands your intent it understands your sentiment and answer those accordingly and the most very important thing is data security as data we do not store any kind of your data outside your server everything is processed at the client own server and, it, and there is no data is living out of your own server so this is very much in compliant using the latest security protocols as ssl tsls and also have an encryption at rest it also has encryption at transit as well so now we talk about how datum works right now we have actually implemented our datums ai into a lot of other industries like retail logistic manufacturing healthcare energy government universities there are a lot of use cases are there and they are taking leverages of data ai so what we have done uh, we have done an uh, overall analysis to see what is the result what is the feedback of the customer so on an average our customer report 60% increase in efficiency 50% elimination of unwanted activities like all day to day daily activities 30% they see increase in their revenues 40% of uh, cost they have reduced 75% turnaround time they have increased like these are ai driven ai enabled chatbots so you do not need any kind of people 24 by 7 sitting anywhere answering to the question which client ask, uh, basically ask it's all driven ai so 75% they have reduced the time and 24% they increased the loading capacity of all the tickets what they are getting so uh, let's see now i we i talk about datums i talk how it works i talk uh, where we have implemented and what is the impact of the implementation so let me uh, go through a case studies of datums where we actually understand what are the challenges faced by those people and how datum has helped them to overcome their challenges so one of the case study is from a cfo he, he was working he is working in a very renowned financial industries so the challenge what he faced is 
basically managing the complex financial data because he is at a, 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 a high level position where he needs to make decision on data. He cannot make decision on, on assumptions. So to collect the data, process the data and get the insight, it's very challenging for them. So to help this use case, uh, we implement datums to because they want to identify the growth in real time and uh, there were there are no other uh, tool which gives the data so as in datums it solves the problem by analyzing the market trends and gives the performance data real time so they can take a decision on, on making a growth opportunity uh, so where they have to invest or how much they have to invest and they also want to track the performance of different different division of, in the globals because it's a globalized MNC. So through datums, they can get a real time performance KPIs, performance reports for an action insights to make the decision. Another uh, case study we have implemented datum in a government, you can say public sector uh, environment where they have a challenge of making uh, policy decisions and improving the service delivery for the end user, for the for the people of the government. So to improve the efficiency of public services, as I mentioned, we we have implemented data uh, datum says datum is all powered by chatbots and it automatically gives you an answer. It integrates various data sources and give you a proper answer. So maybe a a, a people uh, like me come and ask what is the procedure of applying for a driving license i don't know so the datums basically goes understands and gives the steps help him at hand on hand and guide them to make sure that what they need is what they got other the thing is data driven policy making government basically struggles to compile sufficient data for well informed policies this is where the datums comes in a picture analyze the large data sets given from multiple sources, gives you a predictive analysis and gives you a report of detailed understanding of what is going right and what is going wrong. And from that report, they can understand and take a few actions, items on those steps as well. Another good uh, example uh, we implemented into an ed edu tech industries or on a university where they are leveraging the data AI the challenge was like teachers and students are keep relying on data to improve because of the learning outcomes and conducts researches because a lot of things are very repeatedly ha happening over there. So we introduce a personalized learning for students because every student has their own grasping power. Every student is very different from each student. So we personalize what that particular student needs and those only courses and assignments are assigned to them because their strengths are different, their challenges are different. So that is how the data helps there as well. This also helps them to accelerate the research for the students. So students who are doing a deep research in PhDs, they need a lot of data to be uh, pulled from internet or a lot of data to be pulled from the specific data source of university. So we train the university data in a pre-trained model, uh, we host that model and then the data are now like coming from that model in very accurate manner for those specific domain PhD guys. So to move forward, uh, I will walk you through how the Datums AI looks in an action. So I have one video with me. So allow me to play that video and I will show you how the datums works in actual. It's an AI co-pilot for your data. So whatever you ask in your search engine, like which route is having less field consumption, it will give you an answer through textual, through pie chart, through bar chart, there are a lot of interactive answers are there. So if you get an insight of your own data on fingertips, and it will help you to make the decision very accurately. You can connect a lot of database, as I mentioned, or REST APIs. It is powered by industries, LLM, 
and it is very much secure as well. So that was about datums, our product, how it works in real life uh, on your natural languages, just like in chat GPT of your own data. Now I will talk more on how the evolving landscape of AI and data. So because we have lo talked a lot of about generative AI, we talk a lot of about uh, data, we talk about datums, combining those. Now what is the future? where it will go next as an integration of generative ai and data it continues to open new front right and transforming every industries and every domain and user experience to a next level so these are some my research point where i think this will be introducing and uh, giving an edge to the current technology what ai does so rise of multimodality. So when I say multimodality, uh, you guys know ChatGPT 4 and 4.0. It basically takes your text, it takes your images and videos as well. And it will process on your images. It also process on your videos. So this is all multimodal. So it's not restricted to the text. It will go beyond your text, like a model known as Sora. Which is, uh, which is under development on open AI, they do a video generation in a 4K quality with your imaginations. Emergence of small, large language models. So right now we know that all large language models starting from ChatGPT or Gemini or Entropic, every has, uh, every, everyone has model and that model are very large. Starting from 70 billion parameters, somebody is trained on 40 billion or somebody is trained on 7 billion. Even though the size is very large in gigs. So nowadays, uh, the, the models or the company like BERTS are now generating smaller models which can work on your, on your mobile device, which has very less computing power. So to optimize the computation, because they work on your mobile devices, it is very faster. Like you have seen in uh, the recent uh, launch of iPhone 16 Pro and those devices has local models which works very faster on generative AI. Domain specific generative models. So we have been created a lot of uh, application in past. We created Pharma GPT, which is very specific to a pharma industry. So we have a all the data collected from pharma industries we put we pre-train them we, we we feed the data into a, a customized model uh, we put in those in the gpus uh, computation powers and then use for a specific domain so this kind of end model does not answer outside this domain so if you have a pharmacy domain you it will not answer for your manufacturing domain because the people are targeted to finance or the people are targeted to pharma for that domain only real time applications as i mentioned uh, datums give you a real time example of how you can see your data in real life in in, in your insights to make a quick decision on real time people and companies are now adopting the AI as service. So we have uh, platform as service, we have uh, infrastructure as service. Now the new wing is opening nowadays is AI as service. Company like Amazon, AWS, company like Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, they are now giving you business and platform where they you just need to go and upload or configure your model and all the AI stuff they are taking care. So it's more on AI as service. Strong regulatory and ethical practices. So countries like Europe, they are introducing a very strict ethical practice for face recognition. You cannot send any kind of PII outside Europe due to GDPR constraint. So they are also following a lot of ethical practices, which everyone will now follow for this evolving landscape. 
increased focus on high quality and hallucination management as mentioned every company is right now working on hallucination to reduce hallucination they are like retraining the model to make sure the accuracy is more and does not give an fake or answer which is hallucinate widespread embedded ai for better customer experience so every customer platform be it a textual customer experience or audio customer experience this ai will transform the experience totally for an example as a customer service uh, you will get a you call to a customer executive and you talk with them on real time on phone this will be replaced by ai with advanced voice model which are introduced by a lot of companies like open ai or and google as well where they talk to you in your language talk to you in your tone and give you answer what you want so that's all about how we are seeing this landscape evolving in next future time and these are some research which help us to make sure that we are aligned to this now i will ask parmesh to take forward and uh, explain us how an organization can stay ahead how as an organization can leverage and stay ahead with this cutting edge technologies thank you bhujan so that was a very great insight you know for sharing this detail <clears throat> so let me just quickly share my screen let me know if this is visible to all of you it's again perfect yes it's visible to me perfect so as uh, you know pujan has explained uh, that how the industries are changing how the you know typical use cases are taking place now obviously the one question which we all have is like what as an organization i can do you know to stay ahead into the curve of this technologies which is emerging as a generative ai so what i would like to highlight that let's give an importance to the data the quality that's the very first step in any organization we should start doing it because if you are not recording the information if you are not storing the information properly with the relevant data structures you will not able to take an advantage of the generative ai even in the future so this is a very first step i would say make sure we invest into the quality the data quality the inputs which is going into the systems that's first step now second step is more about let's get ourselves updated no matter if we are not using all those different tools out in the market at least we should have an understanding that what the different tools are about how they can play a role into my organization can we do a small uh, pocs or you know like mvps in order to play a, with the data and see how it can add a value maybe it is difficult to implement into the big organization but yet you can always do in a small silos of a small department and give a try and see let me automate something to my finance team first let me automate something to my sales team first or let me do something on a more like a production area so you can also think from that angle it's also an important as a company or as an organization because there are a lot of ceo and cxo level people we should encourage you know our team with the learning as well because in the age of ai if we are not engaging your team members your staff members your employees you know be it a students or whatever areas we are into it we will not able to get to the age so let's invest let's give a culture of innovation let's tell people that you know let's spend some time to learning and implementing some things and try to do some exploration the very other important element is the compliances we also need to you know as pujan mentioned that data security is very important so be it from a cyber security perspective let's you know train them tell them how you should use the data why you should not put the data into the chat gpts why you should not do like this because there are certain confidential information of an organization you knowingly unknowingly you might be putting into the public database which might be open to a lot of people and which can create a problem in the future so let's you know give a focus on the compliance and the ethics as well at last we should think about as a domain specific models so tailored a solution which can solve your business process or solve your particular challenges what you are facing it you don't need to start too big or too loud which you feel that oh it's you know it's very complex how i can do that in my business it is not like that you can simplify the structure you can take help of the right experts and i'm sure they will guide you and take you to the next model in terms of execution so having said that 
the importance element, what we realized over a period of time as a company, we try to create it in a such a way where how a data can play a very important role. So we have built an ecosystem called Rockeye. It's a next gen cognitive suite of solutions, which is designed for an excellence. So why we have designed that? It is for a reason where how each and every company can run their business operations. As you can see in the ecosystem, it has a more than 20 plus independent solutions, which can be utilized into your organization, either complete as a full ecosystem or as an individuals. If you are happy with your own existing systems, it's okay. You can just focus on a one solution at a time and then you can start implementation. Remember, as I said earlier, the recording of the data is the first step. So those kind of systems will help you to record the information in a very proper, organized and a structured way. And the best part is it's all on a cloud. So you don't have to worry about losing of the information. You don't have to worry about dependencies of the lot of data. It can even play attach with your existing systems. If you are using maybe Microsoft Dynamics, if you are using an SAP, if you are using, let's say, Oracle NetSuite, you can still utilize and leverage the ecosystem of the Rockeye and put into the business. So this was all about a different solutions, different use cases, different product systems, what we have done, but it's all about who are we as a hidden brains. So hidden brains is a global IT consulting and software development company that provides an innovative solutions to the enterprise across the globe, across the different industries. We specialize in a custom software development. We understand the process. We understand the challenges. And we try to build a customized solution with the use of the technologies like AIML, IoT, blockchain, cloud computing. And our expertise spans across the web and mobile app development, speed, offshore staff development, offshore maybe, you know, hiring a staff augmentation, modernizing your old system from a legacy to converting to the latest, uh, you know, the database, we can help you. So we have a global reach right now. We've been dealing with almost 108 countries globally. We are in the business for more than 20 years now. We have delivered ex across you know, 38 different industries, 6,000 plus projects. We have an in-house expertise. In total, we got like 700 full-time employees who are spread across five development centers within India. We got offices worldwide, be it in Dubai, be it in Africa, be it in US. And we've been recognized globally with more than 15 different awards. So what we realize and what we feel and what I want to convey that don't feel that as an individual, as a small startup or as a business, you are, you cannot use the technology. The technology is for everyone. You don't restrict yourself to feel that, oh, I'm too small to use this kind of technology or it is too complicated for my business to manage it. Be it a 10 people company or be it a thousand people company, there is something for everyone and there is something, you know, we can definitely assist. So with this part, I would like to, you know, conclude from my side, any questions or anything, you know, myself or Poojan can definitely assist you. Any questions you have, we can do that. And I will also leave that uh, quick information or a QR code. It's in front of your screen. So you can scan the contact details. You can save in your maybe phone book and you can reach out to us if there is any support we can do. So Abil, I would like to, you know, maybe take it over from this and please guide us to the next segment of the webinar. Yeah, thank you, Parmesh. Thank you. Such a wonderful presentation. Thank you, okay. Abil. So is there any question for Hidden Prince? I think there is one uh, in the chat room. Buat okay. yang mau tanya, silahkan pakai bahasa Indonesia atau bahasa Inggris pun boleh. Nanti saya bacakan sesuatu. So from from three Junarso, in case of financial system or report, does Datum's AI guarantee error free to make sure no audit needed? So the financial auditor might not be required by businesses in the future, but by robot or platform. Okay, uh, I'll just start with a little bit of brief, and then I'll ask Pujan to continue. See, nowadays we cannot say that the AI is going to replace the people. We are trying to add up as an intelligence into that part. So there are certain experience, the financial auditor that the people has based on the compliances, but the system can enable us 
to reduce a lot of our work around which we are doing manually and we can focus more on a quality part. So from my perspective, I would never say that it will replace the people. Yes, but it will replace the multiple people which are being used right now to do the lot of unwanted things with system like a datums can help you to structureize it. For example, if you want to build a small report for your financial data, obviously you need to rely to your people, your staff, and you will ask them, oh, can you just prepare that for me? And probably he might be busy or she might be busy and it might take a couple of days for them to come back to you and prepare it, right? But imagine as a business, if you are doing a lot of transactions in a, in a 24 hours to 48 hours, then your data becomes you know old because in the, after two days, the system is not giving you the right information which you needed it. But system like Datums can give you something on a real time quick on your fingertip. Pujan, please add up anything you feel from extra you want to add up. Uh, definitely, Parmesh, as you men mentioned, that it won't replace 100%. So add up on those points, uh, it will. It does not have an 100% error-free data because the quality of result is always depend on the how accurate input data you have provided, right? So whatever you have trained the datums, it will give the result on top of it. So it's very important to understand the quality of data you are feeding to your system. And it is very essential to ensure the compliances uh, with specific regulations are, are intact, which may vary from country to country. So in, in Indonesia, the compliances are different as compared to US, as compared to India. So we need to make sure these things are intact. And then, yes, datum can help you to get what Parmesh mentioned as well. Thank you. Any other questions? I see. I see. Thank you. Hope that answers your questions. Uh, there's a question uh, coming to my inbox. So is there any example of generative AI uh, use cases from India government, whether it is uh, done by hidden brain or uh, uh, developed internally by Indian government? Is there any examples that you can share? So I will uh, just to map you as a company we are a global right so we are not focusing to specific one region or one area but as Pujan has mentioned earlier on the use cases there are big institutions in terms of financial elements which we have been trying to support to the customer uh, you know our clients where they have you know terabytes of data information so what we have done for them as a use case we try to feed that everything into the datum system and we given them a kind of an application even not just a web interface but also on a mobile part so that on the real time, no matter if they are traveling, if they are not in their office, they can see the information and they can provide a crucial decisions to the team. So there are areas, you know, where we can commit and what we can support. And there have been, we doing it from last, you know, 20 years, especially with the AI part from last five years, we have worked on many different use cases, be it from a legal team perspective, especially you, you might be aware that a lot of legal documents are very lengthy to study. It's hundred pages of document. You want to compare multiple versions. So those kind of things where datums can play a very critical role. I see, I see. Um, is there any uh, use cases, uh, you know, as, as, as Indian companies, of course, you have uh, been uh, operating globally, but have, 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 you, have you heard any unique uh, use cases from the Indian government itself for the public sectors? Have you heard any uh, uh, unique use cases? So currently, uh, they, they are working right now to digitalize the complete uh, citizenship ecosystem across to the multiple channels. So be it from a financial side, be it, you know, that permanent account number from the taxation purpose, be it from the health data record. So under one element, they are trying to collaborate in all at a one go so that as a citizenship, you have as an individual access to your health record, access to your financial record, access to your you know history or a family. And currently it is in progress. So I think it's a, a very uh, future sensitive goal what they're working on. And it's gonna take a couple of, I think I would say at least next 12 months to come back, come up with the beta version out of that part. So it's a very, you know, I would say a big thing what we are working on that. No, I see, I see. Okay, okay, thank you. So, okay, there's another one question uh, in the inbox. What do you think about the development of AI to help medical teams, especially in Asia? What tools are currently often used by medical teams? And maybe uh, is, it, is there any uh, tools from Hidden Brains that can help uh, uh, in, a in a medical field? Sure. 
So when we talk about medical teams, you know, there are especially the areas what we are focusing more on teleconsultations, booking and appointments, booking and a clinic management, be it your hospital management. So there are certain areas where we see that as a company we have contributed to across, you know, again, uh, multiple areas, be it from US or Europe or be it in Africa. So what we have done for use cases is we have automated the complete health transformation process with the healthcare information, starting from patient to register to he goes out and then he has a recurring appointments. That's one use case. Second thing is upgrading all his uh, healthcare records into the digital platform. So he has an access to review things that, okay, what was done before two years? What was the area, you know, what has been, uh, you know, taken care of? The third thing is more about teleconsultation, especially under the COVID time, you might have, you know, everyone has seen that we could not go out of our home and, you know, we needed a consultation. So that's where we have built up a very, you know, ecosystem where a person with a click of a button can connect with the doctors. Doctors can keep their abilities. People can book an appointment. So even after hours, before hours, they can have a consultation. Even they can have a recording that can go back to their digital data of the healthcare information. So there are a lot of things I think, you know, as a company we have done and we are happy to support any of, the, uh, you know, Corico team group has any challenges, we can assist them. I see, I see, I see, thanks. We have a very interesting uh, question in chat. Uh, I hope we can do uh, q and for another 10 minutes here. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of question uh, coming in chat. So okay. there's this new uh, that data privacy law that has just been enacted in, 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 in Indonesia by uh, this month, actually. It's a data privacy law and it's been a hot topic in, in, in Indonesia. And Andreas is here in the chat room uh, asking how can AI uh, protect user data from not to be exposed regarding uh, GDPR compliance or the PDP rule, which is the data prote protection rule in Indonesia. Can they help with the data privacy? Right. Uh, Fujan, you want to take this? I will take this question. So as, as, as uh, you mentioned, that how AI can protect user data from not being exposed, right? So there hmm. are a lot of, uh, lot of things to be imply when you create an AI enabled solution, right? Starting from data encryption. So you need to have an AI implemented robust encryption techniques to make sure your data is very secure. Access control, real time monitoring and compliance are the key point where you need to implement in your solution to make sure your data is very secure. But the most critical part is your data should not leave your country premises. So maybe if you are from Indonesia, if you are from Europe or from India, every company, big companies like Amazon EC2, Google Cloud, Azure services are now focusing for data privacy, PDP rules. So we need to comply with those servers. We need to make sure the servers are inside the country region, the instances are intact and are compliant with the government rules. And on top of that, as I mentioned, we need to imply a lot of things while creating the product from data encryption, access controls, uh, anomaly detections. That is how your AI will help you to make sure your PII is not shared anywhere. Okay, thank you. Hope that answered your question, Andreas. So maybe we can do a last question for this session. Uh, how about uh, to handle cybersecurity threat in Indonesia as we know uh, we face a multi-attack in personal data? This might not be an AI-related question, but do you have any... Uh, can your products uh, solve uh, uh, threats in cybersecurity? I wonder how that's work. Absolutely. So I think as a cybersecurity, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's all about getting your organization up to date with the tools, what you have been using. That's the very first thing. So obviously as a, as a country or as a company, you cannot restrict something to not to happen, but you can always preventively take required actions to secure your data, secure infrastructure. So there are a lot of security practices as a IT infrastructure you can follow within your organizations. You should always you know, keep a practice of changing your access credentials, maybe on a couple of weeks basis, couple of uh, you know uh, monthly basis. 
on the cloud base you know you should always have a, a backup and recovery structure so there are a lot of things which i think as a company you should take place to restrict yourself to avoid those kind of things and again as i said you know make sure you learn the things which is going on in the market in terms of different tools and infrastructures available and equip your uh, you know information or a company structures or a servers into that part so you can save that so that's what i would say i see thank you thank you thank you for the response so there's another question but it's indonesia i think i should answer this question apakah rapat ini sudah bersatu termasuk bersatu cyber security perusahaan dengan bsz okay uh, rapat Hari ini tidak ada afiliasi dengan BSSN. Oke, okay. okay, um, that's it for the first session. I think we should uh, move to the next session. Thank you so much from uh, Hidden Brains. I think we should uh, move on to the next session, which uh, will be uh, led by Pak Sahari from Korika. Sure. Silakan Pak Sahari. Terima kasih. Yeah. Uh, kesempatan yang diberikan. <laughs> Mas Abil, saya presentasi ke dalam bahasa Indonesia karena memang hanya itu yang mudah tahu. Jadi uh, saya coba share dulu ya informasinya uh, apakah kita coba lihat apa sudah terlihat kan? Apa sudah terlihat? Sudah. Oke. Okay. Ini yang full ya. Baik, uh, sesuai dengan panelis diskusi yang hari ini, perkenalkan dulu nama saya, saya Ramadan. Saya sebenarnya uh, praktisi saja daripada bidang IT, masih terkait juga beberapa pengalaman memanfaatkan generatif AI, untuk disambungkan interface dengan beberapa perangkat security seperti dan dan lain yang dalam hal ini adalah umum seperti absensi dan GPS tracking. Baik, uh, sinergi daripada generatif AI sebagai salah satu bagian daripada AI di mana dengan data sendiri adalah menjadi sangat penting merupakan suatu kunci daripada uh, transformasi digital secara menyeluruh sebagaimana kita ketahui generatif AI adalah suatu uh, beberapa tahun ini merupakan suatu solusi yang cukup uh, cepat dan sangat menarik dan populer digunakan oleh umum untuk memvisualisasikan bagaimana AI bekerja dalam satu sistem sebagaimana halnya dengan kita bertanya sebagaimana manusia. Jadi dengan generatif AI inilah kita bisa membuat satu konten baru berdasarkan dalam, dengan data-data yang ada, existing data, atau merubah suatu data yang besar menjadi suatu wawasan. Tentunya saja yang paling umum dikenal di sini adalah seperti chat GPT yang merubah suatu teks untuk menjawab apapun menjadi suatu pertanyaan. Demikian juga dengan salah satu produknya dari OpenAI adalah DLI, satu teks yang bisa mengenerate satu image sesuai dengan apa yang kita inginkan. Kedua hal ini, eh, Jenat AI sebagai salah satu model terobosan dengan beberapa contoh yang populer serta ketersediaan data sendiri akan sangat powerful digunakan di dalam Indonesia yang memang lagi hangat-hangatnya memanfaatkan AI dan dari Korika sendiri menjadi suatu konektor untuk menghubungkan berbagai macam potensi menjadikan suatu transformasi ke digital uh, pada masa akan datang. Sebagaimana kita ketahui, uh, beberapa tadi juga sudah dicontohkan oleh Eden Brain, uh, perusahaan di luar negeri seperti Coca-Cola sudah memanfaatkan AI untuk membuat suatu kampanye yang menjadi suatu personalisasi 
berdasarkan dengan uh, banyaknya atau keinginan daripada berbagai macam kelas usernya. Tentunya ini akan berimpak kepada lebih hemat terhadap waktu, biayanya juga ini pun relatif lebih dapat dikurangi, serta tentunya berbasis data bisa mendrive suatu kampanye yang lebih dekat kepada penggunanya. Sedangkan di sektor yang kita ketahui, sektor kesehatan, juga in silico medicine, di sini juga sudah dimulai dengan Departemen Kesehatan, dengan beberapa eh, kementerian di bawahnya untuk memulai AI menggunakan, di ini contohnya adalah untuk mem membuat struktur obat yang baru berdasarkan penyakit-penyakit yang ada dengan sangat cepat tentunya menjadi impact untuk suatu riset yang jauh lebih cepat, mengurangi biaya, dan tentunya memperbaiki daripada uji coba yang lebih efektif terhadap berbagai macam jenis obat. Juga kita bisa tahu, tadi sudah dijelaskan, ini adalah contoh juga bagaimana satu perusahaan kelas dunia, JP Morgan, juga memanfaatkan mendeteksi anomali di dalam sektor keuangan untuk transaksi-transaksi serta memprediksi berbagai macam risikonya. Tentunya impaknya adalah akan memperbaiki lagi daripada sistem keamanannya mereka, kemudian mendeteksi secara real time fraud, uh, fraud detection dan predik meningkatkan keakuratan daripada prediksi berbagai macam hal-hal terkait daripada layanan keuangan. Dan bagaimana menjadi suatu nilai uh, generatif AI dengan data itu sendiri adalah ada tiga hal pokok yang kita bisa dapat tarik uh, garis uh, besarnya adalah kemampuan daripada uh, otomatisasi, automation di mana suatu data yang ditarik akan menjadi suatu wawasan, ya. jadi wawasan sesuatu yang belum pernah terlihat sebelumnya ketika kemampuan komputasi hardware dan softwarenya bisa mengelola uh, data set yang jauh lebih besar dengan cepat dan dengan menggunakan berbagai macam algoritma. Dan tentunya yang kedua adalah kemampuan prediksi atau perakiraan daripada analisa seperti yang dipergunakan juga untuk memperkirakan cuaca, suatu potensi daripada suatu kegiatan itu akan jauh lebih cepat dengan jumlah data yang sangat besar. Dan tentu saja yang terakhir adalah suatu solusi yang bisa dipakai untuk berbagai macam hal seperti untuk mengelola suatu data mentah daripada suatu sistem absensi untuk menjadi suatu kinerja yang bisa kita dapat gunakan untuk suatu karyawan dalam satu korporat. Ini semua ketiga ini menjadi bagaimana uh, generatif AI dengan data yang lengkap sebagaimana telah disampaikan tadi presentasi sebelumnya. Kuncinya adalah data yang lengkap dan juga bersih dan siap untuk dilakukan pengelo pengelolaan. Jadi akan Bagaimana mengatasi tantangan yang muncul? Tentunya ya pertama kembali lagi harus ada kualitas data yang di um, yang dijamin harus bersih dengan berbagai macam parameter dan keabsahannya untuk dapat dibaca oleh sistem berikutnya. Kemudian relevansi data tersebut dengan menggunakan AI AI model ataupun algoritma yang paling sesuai. Tentunya yang kedua adalah Uh, akan menjadi suatu bias daripada AI itu sendiri, di mana di sini telah dijadikan suatu implementasi etika terhadap AI terhadap hal-hal praktis. Saya kira pemerintah juga sudah berniat baik membuat satu rekomendasi surat tertulis bagaimana dalam penerapannya faktor etika AI itu sudah menjadi suatu dasar dalam mengembangkan atau menggunakan, memanfaatkannya. Kemudian yang kedua adalah suatu kemampuan daripada sistem generatif AI atau AI secara umum untuk menghubungkan diri dengan legasi-legasi sistem. Kombinasi ini akan dapat memanfaatkan legasi sistem yang lama-lama sehingga bisa menjadi suatu 
uh, potensi untuk pengelolaan ataupun uh, sifatnya menganalisa suatu kejadian atau risiko yang mundur ke belakang atau sehingga bisa perkirakan uh, risiko di masa datang. Untuk itu perlu ada suatu strategi implementasi di mana secara sederhana dapat digambarkan proses pembersihan, pengoleksian, dan persiapan daripada data yang berkualitas, yang jumlahnya besar, itu sangat diperlukan pada langkah awal, kemudian memilih berbagai macam model algoritma yang paling sesuai dengan pengolahan disesuaikan dengan kemampuan komputasi, software, ataupun hardware. Dan yang ketiga adalah melakukan suatu pelatihan terhadap data itu sendiri, sehingga dengan model-model yang ada di AI dapat mengenali berbagai macam pola yang sudah ada ataupun belum baik diajarkan supervised ataupun yang unsupervised belajar sendiri dari data yang sudah ada dan yang terakhir adalah ketika yakin bahwa semua sudah siap dengan berbagai data tersebut mulai diuji coba dengan mendeploy dalam satu area kami sendiri sudah punya pengalaman mencoba data dalam jumlah besar kalau praktikal Praktikal di kami adalah untuk face matching. Jadi sejumlah kira-kira masih kecil sih ya, sekitar 10, 10 ribu ya, 10 ribu data muka dalam satu organisasi keamanan itu di face matching terhadap berbagai macam sehingga dia bisa menjadi satu, menjadi bagian daripada uh, uh, manajemen uh, building untuk mengetahui akses dan tracking orang yang semuanya dibantu menjadi oleh sistem AI pada ujungnya dan secara real time. Itu kami sudah lakukan sendiri dan itu sangat antusias. Tinggal bagaimana menyesuaikan dengan kemampuan dan keamanan infrastruktur yang akan diterapkan. Jadi salah satu yang sedang kita uji cobakan adalah uh, generatif AI dikombinasikan dengan augmented reality atau apa namanya uh, kacamata apa namanya virtual reality karena ini akan digunakan untuk suatu suatu arah yang paling besar adalah animonya pada saat digunakan untuk training menggabungkan objek-objek uh, virtual ke dalam yang real dengan menggunakan data-data yang di generate dan diatur oleh uh, Gen AI ini adalah satu uji coba sehingga kita bisa tahu salah satu contoh praktis ini dengan adanya virtual reality kemudian yang bisa menggabungkan sebagaimana saya sampaikan sedangkan generatif uh, AI akan melakukan suatu uh, pembuatan dinamik konten yang mengatur tata letak dan bagaimana informasi kedua gabungan ini akan menjadi suatu diharapkan menjadi suatu yang sangat personalisasi, kemudian sangat berpengaruh di dalam pengalaman baru terhadap bidang-bidang uh, seperti pendidikan, uh, retail, ataupun training. Saya kira uh, kolaborasi inilah yang sangat diharapkan di mana uh, berdasarkan berbasis AI uh, dapat juga dilakukan suatu pekerjaan-pekerjaan interior desain kemudian juga real-time uh, virtual training ataupun digunakan di dalam satu uh, mekanisme ataupun uh, proses daripada retail. Nah, ini semua memang bagi kita memang uh, mencoba beberapa, beberapa hal ini untuk di, dicobakan kepada praktik praktek, belum kepada seperti yang digambarkan Tadi mungkin kawan-kawan yang lain sudah melakukan, namun kami sendiri mencoba dengan menggunakan beberapa yang sifatnya uh, lokal dan di uh, apa namanya dibuatkan menjadi chatbot, chatbot pintar untuk suatu fungsi daripada yang operasional dan publik itu sedang kami lakukan. Dan sebagai penutup di sini adalah kami garis bawahi bahwa berbagai macam contoh AI yang lain seperti uh, virtual reality pengalaman itu akan menjadikan bertambah realnya 
sesuatu dunia digital apabila digunakan untuk sehari-hari daripada suatu uh, lingkungan ekosistem yang mendukung. Dan tentunya AI yang dalam hal ini adalah generatif AI yang sangat uh, bagus akan memberikan suatu personalisasi kemudian di bidang-bidang seperti pendidikan dan trading. Dan <tuh> hal ini penggabungan-penggabungan integrasi yang baru bisa kita lakukan belum daripada mengembangkan sendiri hanya melakukan suatu scripting untuk interfacing interfacing alat-alat ini akan sangat membantu sekali beberapa korporasi perusahaan industri untuk menjadikan suatu AI menjadi bagian daripada yang unik yang adaptif dan memberikan ekosistem yang interaktif yang mendorong kepada inovasi dan juga pada bagaimana user memanfaatkannya jadi hanya Itu yang bisa kami sampaikan menjadi salah satu uh, pengalaman memanfaatkan daripada AI sendiri untuk berbagai bidang hal yang sudah uh, berjalan secara konvensional. Saya de- kira demikian, Pak Mas Abi, saya kembalikan lagi uh, apa namanya presentasi ini kepada Mas Abil. Ya, terima kasih Pak Sari. atas presentasinya. Mungkin ada pertanyaan terkait penggunaan AI. Mungkin kali ini karena Pak Sahri ini cukup ahli di Indonesia, mungkin ada yang mau bertanya tentang penggunaan AI khusus uh, di Indonesia seperti apa. Boleh lewat chat atau kalau bisa raise hand boleh juga untuk uh, open mic. Ya, itu ada juga dari sekretariat untuk mengisi uh, daftar hadir. Silahkan diisi untuk yang uh, mungkin request untuk sertifikat juga bisa diisi di situ. Ada pertanyaan untuk penggunaan AI di Indonesia. Oke, okay. saya ada pertanyaan nih Pak Sari. Kebetulan Baik, Pak Sari Masari. ini salah satu expert di Korika di bidang uh, kota cerdas dan kebencanaan, Pak ya? Iya. Yeah. Adakah use case uh, menarik? Karena saya yakin kita semua ini penasaran dengan smart city, apalagi IKN. Barangkali Pak Sari pernah mendengar uh, use case-use case AI menarik di smart city yang baru-baru ini, termasuk IKN. Baik, uh, ini hanya berdasarkan pengalaman keikutan dalam berbagai macam rapat dari mulai konsep, kesertaan, kemudian beberapa hal yang diinginkan. Memang kebanyakan adalah datang dari solusi yang siap jadi. Jadi siap jadi maksudnya datang dari solusi katakanlah dari Rusia, katakan dari negara-negara lain yang coba diterapkan di Indonesia. Memang beberapa hal seperti saya bilang tadi face recognition sangat bagus untuk digunakan di dalam pengawasan gedung ya. Tetapi menyangkut hal lain yang terintegrasi ini masih berupa pulau-pulau pulau. Saya nggak tahu mungkin ada yang lain yang lebih. Tetapi secara konsep itu belum terlihat bagaimana yang disebut dengan smart city sebagai definisi yang pas untuk kebutuhan daripada di Indonesia sendiri dengan kelengkapan infrastrukturnya, perkembangan budaya orangnya. Jadi seperti itu Mas Abil perkembangannya. Mungkin beberapa kawan-kawan korika lain uh, jauh, tapi beberapa yang kami ikuti dalam, dalam tingkat uh, polisi dan kebijakan masih merupakan suatu awan yang memang seperti itu, konsep uh, smart city yang belum sampai kepada uh, bagaimana suatu jalan pintar itu bisa diuji cobakan mulai dari 
jalan kemudian datanya diolah menjadi satu informasi yang lebih membuka wawasan kepada si pengguna jalan itu sendiri. Saya kira itu eh, Mas Abil. Mungkin kalau ada yang mau nambahkan yang lain mungkin silahkan aja dan Korika atau dari kawan-kawan yang berkecimpung di bidang kota pintar. Sedangkan kalau dari data sendiri eh, kebanyakan eh, sudah ada sih mengelola untuk eh, keperluan eh, ekosistem misalnya cuaca. Jadi data-data untuk melihat lebih eh, jelas lagi. Bagaimana memprediksi dan lain sebagainya. Memang menggunakan bagian-bagian uh, atau part-part daripada uh, AI, tapi belum menjadi suatu uh, ke ketersatuan ya, karena banyak hal yang harus disiapin. Sedangkan untuk menyiapkan itu butuh koordinasi, butuh ketersediaan data dan lain-lain sebagainya, Mas Abil. Jadi itu adalah satu. Kondisi yang sekarang yang real kita lihat di lapangan mungkin secara konsep sudah ada sampai detail, tapi dalam implementasinya seperti itu uh, kondisinya, Mas Abil. Mungkin ada yang bisa menanggapi, ada yang bisa melengkapi. Silakan, terima kasih. Ya, terima kasih Pak. Mungkin ada uh, yang ingin menanggapi atau ada yang punya pertanyaan lagi sebelum kita tutup. sesi webinar ini oh menarik untuk menuju Indonesia emas diperlukan SDM dan ekonomi expansion especially daerah-daerah seperti pedesaan, apakah mungkin desa-desa menggunakan AI sebagai sarana mempercepat ekonomi development secara lokal Pak. Oh, oh, ini pasal langsung saya karena memang saya orangnya praktis kita coba melihat aja saya pernah uji coba dalam satu daerah kelapa sawit yang tidak ada sama sekali listrik ya e, mencoba panel surya didirikan kemudian kita membuka akses untuk e, kontrol akses di mana kontrol akses kemudian terkirim kepada suatu server untuk membuka suatu kawasan itu adalah salah satu contoh bagaimana sangat sederhananya di daerah perbatasan menggunakan listrik yang tidak ada untuk mengakses beberapa fasilitas yang modern. Ada lagi satu kami punya pengalaman dengan AI beberapa pengeluaran kelapa sawit, satu lah beberapa satu. Itu di ujung pabriknya sangat modern, menampilkan dashboardnya. Tapi ketika data-data dikumpulkan dari mulai bawah itu mau diambil untuk mengumpulkannya saja butuh perjuangan, baik orangnya juga baik infrastruktur yang mendukung. Sehingga Kalaupun untuk mengirimkan data, itu harus HT-nya di, ditarik pakai drone agar tidak ada vandalisme. Jadi hal-hal yang begitu banyak kita masih temui dengan tantangan yang begitu besar di Indonesia dan tentunya harus sama-sama disiapkan bagaimana sistem yang jauh lebih baik, lebih tepat sasaran dan tepat guna untuk sesuai dengan kebutuhan di daerah-daerah terpencil ataupun di daerah yang belum terjangkau infrastruktur. Saya kira itu pengalaman pengalaman kami aja, Mas Abil, untuk satu sistem di mana semua ada tapi masih belum uh, lengkap secara menyeluruh di Indonesia ini. Terima kasih. Baik, terima kasih Pak. Masih banyak PR ya untuk kita bisa implementasi ya. teknologi dan infrastruktur yang canggih-canggih gitu. Oke. Oke, ada lagi pertanyaan dari Pak Ipin Sugiarto. Apakah generatif AI ini tetap masih dibutuhkan validasi oleh human itu sendiri atau kita sudah bias, bisa mempercayai 100% tentang hasil yang diberikan oleh model tersebut? Karena menimbang data itu pasti ada saja biasnya. Terima kasih. Bagaimana Pak Sari pendapatnya? Iya, ini sih pengalaman pribadi kita nyoba membuka beberapa... Uh... baik itu eh, apa namanya kalau nyoba sendiri ya apa nih yang open source sih belum ya sampai kita tapi kita mencoba API API yang diberikan eh, suatu layanan untuk kita integrasikan dengan berbagai macam eh, data lokal memang tentunya API eh, validasinya itu yang kami cobakan adalah validasi mengenai akses untuk 
uh, layanan itu sendiri ya key-nya uh, hanya sampai di situ saja sebelum kami coba lagi ke tingkat yang lebih tinggi atau yang lebih apa namanya security-nya untuk bagaimana masalah integritas data itu sendiri atau keakurasiannya dan dari mana data itu diperoleh. Jadi baru belum belum kami uji uji cobakan dari dari bidang ataupun uh, kami untuk hal itu, Mas Abil. Ya, terima kasih. Memang uh... Terkadang kalau AI itu tidak seperti ini, Pak, ya. Tidak seperti uh, rumus matematika biasa atau mungkin software accounting, gitu, ya. Yang pasti benar, gitu, Pak, ya. Iya, karena, ya, karena lebih, pengalaman sehari-hari menggunakan uh, seperti generative AI ini adalah kemampuan kita membuat suatu prompting yang baik, yang mengarahkan sehingga berbagai hal yang memang kita tahu ada data yang memang diekstrak oleh sistem tersebut bisa untuk berbagai hal. Jadi prompting engineering itu sangat penting untuk melihat berapa efektifnya uh, hasil yang di uh, hasil yang diberikan oleh uh, generatif AI yang ada di publik tentunya yang uh, high level ya ada ada berbayarnya karena itu akan membuat suatu kualitas yang jauh lebih baik. Saya kira beberapa pertanyaan-pertanyaan saya saya membuka beberapa pertanyaan terkait untuk ini uh, memulai pagi aja ini dengan ide ya kita bisa menanyakan aja nama saya tadi kerja apa aja saat hari ini nah banyak ide-ide yang membantu kita untuk meluruskan lagi beberapa hal yang terkait daripada uh, apa yang pernah kita kerjakan dan terekam oleh uh, sistem generatif AI dengan kemampuan uh, mengelola dengan uh, apa namanya machine learningnya yang panjang dia bisa mengetahui kita seminggu itu ngapain aja terus untuk apa dan targetnya untuk mensamari kegiatan kita selama seminggu itu pengalaman pribadi aja cukup sangat membantu bagi pekerjaan-pekerjaan yang sifatnya menulis karyakan atau menjelatif satu konten saya kira itu mas Abil ya terima kasih Pak Sari ini kebetulan ada satu pertanyaan lagi Uh, apakah Horika dilibatkan kolaborasi dengan beberapa pemerintah dalam membuat kebijakan di bidang digital? Kebetulan ada Prof. Hamam Riza di sini selaku Ketua Umum Horika. Mungkin Prof. Hamam berkenan menjawab, Prof. Oke. Okay. Mungkin saya bantu Jawab Pak Ipin ya, Pak LD. Kolaborasi dengan badan-badan pemerintah, sebetulnya kita ada satu inisiatif yaitu AI Readiness Assessment bersama dengan UNESCO. Itu kebetulan kita membuat, mengkaji kesiapan AI di Indonesia, tapi juga ada rekomendasi kebijakan yang kita sampaikan ke UNESCO. Oke, sebentar. Mas Lukman bisa dibantu unmute, Prof. Hamam. Ya, selanjut, silakan lanjut aja. Uh, saya ikut uh, dorong aja. Terima kasih Pak Sari dan uh, Hidden Brains untuk webinar ini. Terima kasih. Ya, terima kasih Prof. Ya, jadi kita ada ada satu inisiatif bersama dengan UNESCO itu AI Ready Assessment. Kita memberikan juga uh, policy recommendation uh, kepada uh, Kominfo yang diterima langsung oleh Pak Wamen uh, Nezar Patria. Jadi memang kita ada beberapa rekomendasi kebijakan yang kita bantu formulasikan gitu ya. Juga ada inisiatif-inisiatif lain nanti ke depannya seperti bersama AI Singapore dan lain-lain untuk membuat rekomendasi kebijakan. Terus kemudian dari Pak Ipin, manusia tetap harus menimbang beberapa realita untuk mengurangi missing information sebagai outputnya. Nanti nanti penunjang pengambilan keputusan atau prediksi di masa yang akan datang. Iya, betul. Mungkin Pak Sari mau menanggapi dari Pak Ipin. Oke. 
silakan Pak. Masih kemit Pak, sorry, Pak Saru. Iya, ketika saya juga bermimpi di dalam hati setelah melihat betapa gencarnya memberikan jawaban dan sangat membantu pekerjaan-pekerjaan sejenis konsultasi. Sampai kapan mereka bisa yang akhirnya mereka sadar bahwa saya adalah mesin. Nah, kalau kesadaran itu sampai uh, mungkin akan terjadilah perubahan bahwa mesin itu sudah setara dengan kita. Selama ini kan dia banyak membantu kita, kompilasi, menyusun, tapi dia belum sadar sampai hari ini. Kalau mesinnya sudah sadar bahwa dia adalah mesin, nah kita harus hati-hati dan mulailah etika AI itu akan sangat berperan di situ. Itu aja Mas Abil sekedar uh, Siap. joke di uh, webinar ini. Siap. Siap Pak Sari, terima kasih. Saya kira udah nggak ada pertanyaan lagi ya via chat room. Terima kasih juga semua yang untuk, untuk uh, yang sudah hadir. Uh, bagi yang perlu untuk uh, sertifikat boleh isi uh, link daftar kehadiran ya yang tadi sudah di share oleh Sekretariat Korika. Saya coba posting lagi di uh, room chat. Silahkan diisi. Oke, okay, mungkin kita akhiri webinar kali ini. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you all. Uh, thank you Hidden Brains for sharing with us. I hope we meet again in the future. Terima kasih. 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 Terima kas